Ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest day of the year. The day, this is like the day before Christmas. This is like the day before your birthday, the day before the first day of school, an hour or two before that, that first date. It's, this is, <laughs> this is one of them, it, it's starting to well up in you. You feel the excitement, the butterflies. Let's get going. Let's get, to, let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's clock in. The roster is set for the Raptors. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to see what we got in store for the season. Like, I want to see how it plays out. All the money's on the floor. They said 30 and a half. This is what they settled on. First, it was 27. Then it was 10. Now it's 30 and a half. That still seats us at 11 for 12. And I, I'm not trying to hear that. There's no way. Nah. Nah, that don't even sound like us. That sound like somebody else. <laughs> A little further down the line. That ain't us. That ain't us. There ain't no truth in that. We're going to see, though. We're going to see how the truth plays out on the court. Because I think, of course, we all know we're way better than we were last year. The fact that we were able to address the bench situation and improve to this point. To this point, just after, if you, when I tell y'all what the preseason numbers were, I'm going to do that in a whole separate video. The preseason numbers for the bench are Will Chamberlain-like. <laughs> I was happy if we can get that Giannis, 32, 12, and 6. We putting up Will Chamberlain numbers as a collective off the bench. But it's not real time, so people are like, let's see what it looked like after the course of you know 15 games 45 games 62 games let's see what happens throughout the marathon of this season getting off of planes getting on the planes eating different foods being in different let's see how that works out I'm cool with it I, I want to see what the reality is because these numbers the numbers that we put up whoo <laughs> enough enough to make you think. We might be top five easy if the Bens could put up these numbers. Top four. Definitely take Philly spot. With Joel and Beeb only only playing. <laughs> he, he already gonna miss 15 games off rip. And you already know he ain't gonna play all 67 of the other remaining games. But we're gonna have that conversation later too. But there's a lot of the money on the flow. You understand me? I'm and I'm I'm so happy and I'm so elated that these conversations that we have, even though we're enthusiastic and we're logical and philosophical, and it doesn't really move the needle as far as the fate of all of our teams. Everything has to be decided on the court. We're spectators. We're nothing but mere spectators. We're important spectators. Don't get it, don't get it fucked up. We are very important to the show. Without us, there is no show. Big part of the show now. Big part of the show. But we have to understand that everything is going to be decided by the players. It's out of our hands. We could believe. We, have, we give them our support. We give them our time and, my, and our attention and our verbiage. But there's no amount of vernacular that can take the place of the actions that got to take place on the court. And the work they have to put in. I don't want to underestimate or overlook the responsibilities that the players have to prepare every night and to take it serious and to put the work in. I'm not doing the work. They are. I'm going to play my part. But the part they have to play is, is massive. But we, we play a big part because we shine a light on what they're doing. Without our attention and time, those performances get overlooked and... We go back to watching Seinfeld and the Cosby Show and old episodes of Martin and Living Single and Friends and all that. How I Met Your Mother and King of Queens and <laughs> everybody loved everybody loved Raymond and everybody hates Chris. We go back to watching TV and binge watching. But they have a great, a, a great, like they, they're going to give us so much to speak about. This season is going to be exciting. I've been waiting for this season since last season. And I believe my Raptors are gonna are gonna surprise a lot of people. We're gonna either we're gonna press the issue and apply pressure and force teams to really step to us and beat us, because we're not gonna let your reputation intimidate us. 
That's one thing I hated the last few years. Like, you know, some guys were starstruck. Some guys were you hesitant playing against guys they looked up to and played in the video game as. Like, you just, you got to work your way out of that. Those are your contemporaries. You got to put the work in. And as long as we put the work in, I think 42 is possible. I got us at 42. I got us at 42 wins. Definitely, we're definitely better than 30 and a half. I'll tell you that right now. We're better than 30 and a half. Because there's too many sub-500 teams. No, we're not a part of that. I, I don't care what you say. We ain't in, uh, You put us in that club. You want us to be in that club, you're going to have to beat us. Because you're not going to do it by talking. And you can't just put whoever you want on the court because we'll put them in a sleeper hole and put them in a locker. We ain't playing. There's 16 teams not making the playoffs. Those are plates. That's all I'm saying. And if we come in hungry and we come in responsible and we come in taking it serious and not being intimidated by who somebody used to be and be pressed with the issue of who you who are you tonight? I know you all NBA. I know you are all star. I know you got potential. What you going to do tonight, though? Which one, which side of the coin is going to show up tonight? Is the all NBA player going to show up or that dude that just want to send the jersey in? You're going to have to work and show us. Because that, that reputation and what you used to be, that's what you did last year, homeboy. What you doing this year? What you going to do tonight? What you going to do in this play? What you going to do at the free throw line? What you going to do when I apply pressure and we ain't just letting you walk all over us when it looked like work? Let's see what you got then. If you still that same player, cool. If you still that same team, cool. But we ain't doing it to ourselves is what I'm saying. We come in hungry, them sub-500 teams could get us 30 and a half easy. Could get us an easy 31 easy. We going to push. Listen, and if we push the top six teams, we going to let the wins and the losses speak for themselves. We going to let the math math. Whatever happens with the top six teams on the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference on either coast, we'll accept that. We'll get a chance to see who we are and what we need to work on for real to compete against them. Because time is on our side. A lot of teams got to win now. Knicks got to win now. Philly got to win now. Milwaukee got to win now. Miami got to do something. Boston got to keep winning. Orlando got time just like we got a little less time than we do, but they, they got time. Charlotte? Uh, the Wizards? Whew. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Knicks, of course, like I said, the Knicks have to win now. Also, like there's so many teams that are in these different spaces, and the pressure is on them. There's not a we playing with house money. They walk in a different tightrope at a higher altitude. They don't have a lot of, there's not gonna be a lot of leeway for the slippage. Because they've, they've ascended to another level. They're all on another level. We got time to get there. They got to get there now because it's going to start going backwards for them after a couple of years. And it's going to go forward for us. It's just the timing. It's just the evolution of this thing that we're in. You know what I mean? I believe we can get 30 wins off of Scotty, RJ, and Quickly alone. Yacoperto alone. And y'all be putting a lot of, y'all put a lot of schmutt on, 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 on Yak's name, and I'm sitting there looking at y'all. I've been saying I like him as our center since we got him. I like his game. It's, it's, right, it's exactly what we need. He gets us good numbers. He doesn't draw a lot of attention in the media. He does his job. He keeps it moving. He got his money. He's not a problem. Like There's a lot of great things we get with Yak and I like I like Yak from the gate. He fits what we're doing perfectly. He does the job. He don't have to celebrate with the crowd and have these great, these great takes on social media. He comes in, earns his 20, 18 million, and that's he deserves every penny. That's all. Sometimes you we don't need everybody to be the star. Everybody got to play their position. He's the listen, if we're boys to men, he's the base. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? End of the road, my man was talking. Girl, you ain't got. I knew you was cheating on me. I just, I just ain't care. We need that. <laughs> we need the deep voice. He's the base. Everybody can't be Wanye or Sean or Nate. It's 
Somebody got to be the base. Come on, baby. Don't do that. Somebody, listen, somebody got to be Ricky Bell. And shout out to Ricky Bell. Somebody got to be Michael Bivens and Ronnie DeVoe. You know what I mean? Somebody got to be Scoob and Scrap Lover as important as they were to Big Daddy Kane's career. Imagine his career without Scoob and Scrap Lover. I can't even imagine it. His career ain't been the same since, since without them. We don't even think if Scoob and Scrap ain't there, I don't even want to hear the song. I love Scoob and Scrap that much. But we out here and we'll and, and we're in this space where anything is possible. Now we got a bench. And if that bench could give us Giannis numbers, 42 is not far-fetched. 42 is a reality. And it's going to be a hard 42. It ain't going to be no easy 42. It ain't going to be no walk in the park. You know what I'm saying? And I'm with it. I accept the challenge as a fan of being, opt I'm, you know, I'm going to be optimistic regardless. Because as long as we putting in the work, man, as long as we making progress, I'm happy. As long as we doing it the right way, I'm happy. I don't, I don't give a shit. As long as we doing it the right way, I'm, I love I love this team. I love the fan base. I love the energy. I love the vibe. We ain't got to... Listen, there's only one champion, but if we working towards it, that's all we can ask. A lot of these teams ain't even doing that. They just showing up like they work at, you know what I mean, Wendy's or something. <laughs> A lot of these dudes show up like they work in fast food because this is their first job. And they don't know what it's like not to have. They don't know what it's like not to... like. Yeah, when I was a kid, I ain't had nigga. You was a kid. You was twelve. You ain't you ain't had. Y'all ran out of potato salad. You and your feelings, and y'all ain't. I couldn't wear Jordans like the rest of my. That's not important. That type shit ain't important. And with the no child left behind, they done put so much money in making sure everybody on the same page at the least in every facet that these kids can't cry broke or poor. Everybody poor. Everybody broke. Inflation making everybody look like they're in the same boat again. This is their first job. It ain't like they were fired from two or three jobs and then pay their rent and then they became NBA ball players. No. Fresh out of college. Fresh off of the, the, the ecosystem that is the college atmosphere. I like I, I liken it to real life at a slower speed. I love those college years. I loved it. I love college towns. Beautiful. But you they they have no real measurement of not having versus having and going without as an adult versus as a child. It's, it's not the same. You know what I mean? So they're not coming in with the same passion as somebody who had lost a few jobs and then finally got on. They're not appreciating the opportunity as they should. It becomes normal for them to have this. And they they leave some money on the table that we can scoop up. You know what I mean? We coming in to win. And, that, and that's the thing I don't like about that 30 and a half. They acting like we ain't coming in to win. We not coming in to practice and to show you that we could keep up. We coming in to win. Fix your face. We not coming here to compete in jersey swap. We want blood on the court. We want work. We want all that work. Whatever it is, we want work. Come in and work. Come in and be like, woo, that was that's different. It gotta feel like something. It can't be this was this was the shootout. That's what Boston want. Boston want them shootouts. All right, cool. We <laughs> we could do that too. But when we go up against them teams that really grind it out, we wanna let them know, listen, we hold our own here too. We prefer this. You know what I mean? Four corners in the elevator. The NBA ain't full of those teams like that. A lot of these teams just, they want to go through the motions and be successful. Sometimes you got to, most times you got to be more deliberate, more intentional. And pay attention to detail. You know what I mean? Be real wise with your time and your energy. And they won't last forever. You know what I mean? How you do one thing is how you do everything. And as long as we're coming in to win, listen. The, listen, either 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 we're going to have a genuine opportunity to advance or the fix is in. I'm going to say that. Because we're not 30 and a half. We're definitely, I got us at 42. Unless there's some wicked shit going on behind the scenes, allegedly. Unless the fix is in, allegedly, to have things a certain way for entertainment purposes. 
If everything is created equal, we 42. We 42 and better. If the referees step out through it, 42 and better. 42 and better. That's all it is. That black cloud got to follow somebody else. We did what we were supposed to do. We made the transition. Everybody that was once a part of this organization in the championship have moved on to greener pastures, getting paid, getting that paper. And, you know, and now it's time for us to, to get going on another championship. We got to figure it out. And as long as we come out there and we play our game, we, we're better than what everybody expected. We just gotta, we just gotta work. As long as we come in there to work, we're fine. You know what I mean? The NBA ain't got enough teams trying to work. There's only a couple teams really trying to come in, and the starters got the responsibilities to carry. You know what I mean? Ain't a lot of benches out there that could really come in there and and do what Orlando does. Orlando, I think Orlando had the best bench in the NBA last year. From what I saw, I if if or if Denver had Orlando's bench, they win it all, easy. The Celtics had a good bench too. They all know how to. They were able to shoot and produce points, but you know what I mean. That blue collar work against the Pacers was big. They were able to. It wasn't just a shootout. They took care of some of that blue collar work, and that's how they won the series. But it's not a lot of teams with really, really good benches. Whoever has the greatest bench is really going to go far. You know, farther than expected. Our bench is putting up. Well, <laughs> wait till we talk about the bench. But I'm excited, man. Like if you if you're a Raptor fan, you're just happy about the possibility of stepping into something a lot more, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, stepping into these auspicious occasions more often than not. <laughs> you're not getting caught up in the rigmarole of we got to rebuild and people wanting to tank after two losses. And now nah, we're gonna keep working. The beauty is in the work. As long as we keep working, I'm happy. Tell me what you think in the comments section. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. I'm out of here. Peace.